I'm thinking. Actually, never mind. I don't know you well enough yet. Wait, what? Uh, nothing. I don't know you well enough yet. I'll tell you when I know you better. Okay. All right. Fair I enough. If that goes well. Fair enough. Fair enough. I don't know how to get to know people. Uh, I guess just by having conversations, you know? <sighs> yeah, but I get, like, really awkward. Eh. Depends on the person, I guess. So what's going on between, uh, between you and Nino? Nothing. From my knowledge. I mean, he hates my guts, but... Yeah, but why? Like, it's... Aren't you, like... I I don't know. So, as far as, like, recent stuff goes, we had talked while the debates were going on, or, like, uh, election. And then we were, like, on the same page, and we were agreeing, agreeing on a lot of things of, like, oh, yeah, we shouldn't have, like, mandated work hours. We should end the work hours, and we should be providing things that want people make people want to stop working <laughs> instead of forcing people to stop working etc cetera, etc cetera. all these ideas thrown out yeah that sounds amazing yeah that's great and then day one came around and i'm not exactly somebody who is like wow i'm gonna enjoy this this win especially when i've won four times so i it's all the same to me now um so i got to work right away bcso were like we want to have a highway patrol um and for that to like be strictly on the highway and not I guess divert from that so pretty much um you know if you're a criminal and you're highway blasting you pretty much know exactly what you're getting yourself into if you start getting the highway patrol on you you pretty much asked for it at that point when you could have done all you wanted to avoid it yeah so very like opt-in kind of situation um and when i went down there as like a courtesy thing out of like hey would lspd be interested in also having this be a thing and then kind of working together, just wanted to pick your brain about it before we like actually put pen to paper and try to come up with something formal in case there was anything uh, like big issues you could point out or things that we should keep in mind when doing that. And then we could all sit down and talk about it when it's more like detailed, I guess. His response was, yeah, go ahead and write me up a proposal and give me the proposal. Damn. And I walked out because I was like, I don't have to propose shit to you we're of equal standing <laughs> this was more of a hey let's work together on something kind of thing yeah um so i was like fuck that shit uh and then i kept trying to work with him anyway it turned out it seems like <laughs> it was a miscommunication listen i've known nino a long time and i tried to give him the benefit of the doubt that he is not the same nino that he was years ago and he immediately proved me right that he is but i tried anyway and then i sent him hunting legislation to see if he wanted to make it statewide and he don't know well with me and i haven't seen him since so but pretty much there was like a little series of him having meetings with people who would then leave those meetings and call me and be like you know just said all this shit about you and then i just go oh no anyway so that i i don't really know when was the last time you talked to him it was that day uh i think i think that day he called and we like tried to hash out the propose this to me thing so our first day in office i guess why holy shit that's okay damn well you know i've been i've been hearing i've been hearing a lot of things and you know word of mouth spreads <laughs> rumors spread like crazy around town and um not not that i really care but um i just heard there's a lot of problems with the city and, and Blaine County calling people Blainers and shit like it's kind of strange I don't know so that bothers BCSO more than it bothers me <laughs> I like here's the thing I'm I am used to banter and I'm used to like high levels of shit talking I don't be the mayor four times without having issues like that I don't like the gang without having issues like that it's more of when you try to legislate mm. banter into like actually being incredibly divisive um that's when it gets kind of dicey but other than that i mean i saw him blaming me for his stuff getting contested i signed i think one of the things and that was taxing the food stalls because northerners have food stalls down here too yeah 
so it was something that affects people in the north. Um, but other than that, I don't, really, I don't really care what he does down here. I think the two places should be different, but I don't think the state set itself up for the split that was pretty much decided overnight. So without the infrastructure to be able to like pull us all back and say, hey, let's just stay north and northerners stay north, we don't have the infrastructure for it. So I get what he's trying to do. And I get that he, because he was honest and was like, I want a friendly competition between the north and south, but um, I just don't, I don't think the state's ready for that. I don't think it was uh, supported with infrastructure to support that kind of a conflict. Yeah, for sure. So I just haven't really done anything. I've Seems been fucking around with Peters and I was like, if you guys call us Blainers, I'm going to need some suggestions for what to call you guys. And then he gave me Nino's Ninos and I was cool with that. <laughs> so it's all very like petty to me. I think the biggest stuff is between LSPD and BCSO. Otherwise, I kind of just don't, don't. I just kind of don't deal with it, if I'm being honest. I mean, it's it's that's a good thing, right? It's a good thing that you're unaffected by that. Just focusing on, on, on the job. Yeah, I don't I don't care because most of the stuff that's said is baseless. So how do I argue against something that's not real in the first place? It's just mm. kind of a waste of my time. I'd rather just make the north better since I live there, set it up well, so somebody else can take the reins. And I've done all of the bullet biting of the initial legislation stuff that is not going to be fun for anybody. So you, you're thinking long, long term. It. Yeah, I just wanted to set it up for people. I mean, even now I'm trying to see if I can step down because I kind of did everything I wanted to do. It was just more of, um, if you don't set it up right, it collapses, as we just saw. So I yeah. figured I'd be the best one for the job since back in the day when we had a new try at government. I was the first one to set that up, and it lasted quite a long time. So figured I could do it again. Honestly, I couldn't think of anybody better for uh, for Mayor. I think you're doing a really good job. Did you say the same thing to Nino? Where's the car parking? No, I knew Nino would be a, a shit show. <laughs> and uh, he would be a lot Nino. of drama. Yeah. He... I'm more willing to say nice things about Nino than he would ever say about me. But I think Nino probably has some good ideas. And then he overcooks them and over spirals and over paranoids until they're bad ideas <laughs> hmm. they start in good places with good intentions or like wouldn't even necessarily say good but interesting for his county and then I think it's just like absolutely overcooked I mean all the legislation is like 10 times longer than it needs to be when people are not going to read it regardless yeah and I get what he's trying to do and being detailed isn't bad it's just people here are stupid we don't fucking read nobody wants to stand there and fucking read it's just not how it goes but Short and sweet and simple. Exactly. And the more people that understand their rights and everything that has to do with it, the more people can feel like they can take those to court cases because they'll remember what their rights actually are. And then, you know, more continuations of things. Instead of people having no idea, I'm cutting it short. But I, I don't know why he hates me. I think he probably thinks I'm doing more against him than I actually ever have. But he also doesn't pick up the phone to call me and ask me, so... What are you going to do? I think it's just another one of those things where like 90% of the problems in this place could be solved in the span of a single conversation if both parties were willing, but yeah. it just doesn't happen for whatever reason. Hmm. He knows older than me, but I feel too old to deal with it. So what comes after, Bill? I don't know. I don't know anymore. I am very lonely. I don't have a lot, which is why I sink myself into work. Because if my brain's not operating at full capacity, I remember how lonely I feel with all my boys being gone. And it's hard to get to know anybody new because everybody kind of stays within their bubble because, you know, in fairness to them, they don't have a lot of reason not to. Everybody can do everything for themselves now. Yeah. And everybody's always like, 
30 second conversations on the way to their next job. You know, I hate that. I, I, I hate that. Yeah. Crews and whatever, organizations, gangs, just groups in the city are self sufficient. Uh, yeah, nobody I mean, needs it, each other for anything. I've tried reaching out to other other gangs, and I'm still trying to do that. To um, like even though I might already have what I'm asking for, it's it's you know I want to I want to build that kind of relationship where hey, if you have something to provide, let me get it off your hands, and 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 vice versa, you know. But every time yeah. I call somebody, they're like, nah. I mean, I I already have everything. I already have everything you have to offer, and. I don't need any, anything from you, so I'm like, oh, okay, you know, just go fuck myself. <sighs> or, if it's, or if it's something new, the answer is always, what does it do for me? And yeah. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you with that. I mean, at some point. Yeah, I mean, even even with how things work now, I'm actually going to legitimately ask this because uh, me and the boys were around when everybody first moved back. Uh, we're just, I'll, I'll be straight up, we're just not grinders. We don't want to spend our days doing that, so we just didn't the arms race kind of thing. I mean, the HOA was around longer than most of the people who live here currently. It is, it was a very, very old thing. So most of the boys also had been through so many, I guess they feel like groundhog day where they're like going through all of it again and having that like weird arms race to be the first at whatever. And we just <laughs> realized that we don't really care at the end of the day. It's not really our brand of crime. Mm. Um, so with groups now, is there not an argument to be made between groups of like, if you guys focus on this thing, we'll focus on this thing and then we'll just like make deals with each other so that we all have less to do in general and we have more free time to do whatever may come? Nah. Honestly, no. I, I mean, relationships are just so unstable and this is something I've learned over time with my time in the city. It's just... Everybody at the end of the day will become your enemy no matter what. No matter how close you are to them. Unless they're part of your own outfit. And and yeah. the egos in this city just don't allow for that kind of understanding, that mutual understanding to happen, right? Uh, today I might make a deal with you saying, okay, listen, you know what? You get these guns for me and I'll get you some form of drug or whatever. Tomorrow we're going to war. And then that's out the window over the stupidest shit like you have no idea we've been in conflict with half of the city more than probably everybody every organization in the city over the stupidest thing out there uh, over food over food stalls we've gone to war over food stalls not us going to war over food stalls but the other party kind of putting you in a we don't really have another choice kind of situation yeah so i mean i try we try and um really hard we hardly ever warred. We were not war heavy, and when we did, we were delivering terms day one, so that it didn't become this endless cycle where everybody's just harming and not benefiting from any of it. Yeah. It was just not our thing. Most things we just didn't care enough about, especially when it comes down to like the respect and the principle of things. We're like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. I'll apologize. No biggie. We just want to go about our days. Literally anything to keep me from driving around in a blacked out car for fucking nine hours straight. Oh my god, yeah. Fuck my life. There are things I miss about gang life, but that is not one of them. And I will never do it again. Unless it is like some high stakes, serious fucking shit. I am not hopping into a vehicle to go shoot somebody over like a food stall ever in my life these gangs out here they love all that they love getting into convoys they love getting into blacked out cars gearing up with fucking three <sighs> armors parties. typical hunting parties we hate that shit like over here i mean sure we've done it but we've done it because we have no other other choice but um oh yeah we did too I, i'm telling my people now like hey listen if there's a war we're gonna fight this shit on on the ground um uh, f fuck all that Cringy shit. I, I don't know. It, it's just it's so annoying. I feel like Cyprus is very different from, from other gangs uh, in in that sense. We we we're, we're very very different. It's it's outliers. It's not really like a yeah. It's not it's not a gang. We don't we don't fly fly uh, fly colors or paint our cars a certain color or 
Unlike that, it's just... You guys seem more like an organization than a gang. Yeah. You should see the amount of personalities we have in here, too. Like, those boys back there, <laughs> th th those guys are fucking hilarious. They're great. They're not necessarily grinders. That one guy has $17,000 in his bank account, and he's been through fucking hell, you know? So, um, yeah. uh, like, pe people in this crew, they, they live comfortably because of the people around them, not because of how rich they can get. Come here, park was anybody who was welcome as long as you were kind of a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, it it's nice. It's actually nice to hear though, because Mirror Park was like the safe haven where if you're not into that kind of life, but you do want to feel like you belong somewhere and have consistent people to be around, then Mirror Park was the place for you. So it is actually really, really good to hear that there is another place like that. It's a shame I um I came in a little bit late to the city. Yeah. Didn't I think really you did. I think I came into the to like the tail end of the HOA. Saw oh, some yeah. members around and Yeah, it was unfortunate. <laughs> Wish I could have seen it though. Yeah, we were considered uh soft weirdos. We we're kind of like if a mental hospital was released in a suburban neighborhood. But <laughs> I think <laughs> us being different was the best part of it. Because we weren't like any of the other groups around we're just the fucking weirdos if you saw something strange going on or rushing past you or you see a semi being towed with a bunch of people screaming like monkeys in the back with a cop held hostage you go oh yeah that's HOA <laughs> without a doubt in your mind <laughs> Damn. it's just we were weird we were weird we had big personalities and we were all different and it was great I mean that's the that's key thing right there blend. being different right just just mm -hmm. Not like everybody else. That's that's good. That's a good thing. Miss them a lot. So now I just It's just me left really. Even the other day they transferred me the house we had. And I don't even know if I want it. I'm kinda of just holding it on to it for nostalgia's sake, I guess. Maybe you won't have a reason to use it now, but down the line, perhaps. You never know what comes uh, around the corner. Yeah, honestly, the only person that's asked to spend any time in probably like a year, that wasn't somebody I was already friends with. Yeah. And I don't have a lot of friends, friends. I know a lot of people, but I don't have a lot of friends. Oh, well, it might be a good opportunity to uh, make new friends. That would be good. Yeah. I, don't know. I never know where I stand with people. I hear a lot of the like shit talking hate stuff that goes around, but I don't know if that's just the loud minority. Mm. So I always get a little self conscious and wonder how many people believe the things that like, you know, the Ninos of the world will go and spread to the best of their ability. <laughs> the Ninos of the world is crazy, yeah. The Ninos of the world. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time somebody shit talked me without just talking to me, I would be the richest woman here. But that comes with being in very prominent positions. I mean, I've been, that's the other thing too, is I don't know what I want because I've kind of been at the top of both sides of the line. Like I was second in command into interim leader into just full on leader of HOA. And I've also been the mayor four times. Like I don't really have anywhere more to go run the best damn events i don't i don't what else is there for me hey you got that right you got that right fucking survivor's a hit everybody loves that shit <laughs> thank you appreciate it i just i loved being a number two i loved just being i don't know gang mom take care of everybody make sure everyone's good keep up with chores push people to do whatever keep people entertained but I don't know if I'll ever find that again you know I tend to um, try to bring people in that's my job one of my jobs is one of the leaders down here I don't know I feel like it'd be disrespectful to try that on you on you specifically why would it be disrespectful? I don't know. I feel like, uh... 
I mean, like you said, maybe this life, you've already done that, been there, done that, you know? I don't know. Can't really say. I don't know what your guys' life looks like. There's always new ways to do all sorts of things, but... There are a few things I would not do again. Hmm. War convoys being one of them. Yeah, I, I, I am. I'm much more of a white collar <laughs> crime girly now. After robbing the casino as well, I kind of am. It's hard to look at any other job and feel like <laughs> it's worth it. I feel like I, I hit the top of that too. Not to mention, I'm a very uh, cost versus benefit kind of person. Mm. I'm like, how much is this going to cost us to do this job? What is the potential payout we can get? And what is the police response we're going to get? And likelihood of us actually getting out of it. Smart crime. Yeah. Much more white crime, white collar crime type of person speaking. Of. Mm. Never mind. <clears throat> Why? Not, but I'm not offended by that. Just so you are aware. That's good to hear. It's good to hear. Well, maybe, um, maybe, maybe we can retake this topic once you're out of, uh, out of office. Mm 